and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat, and this session would look at additional CPA questions that are covered also in a managerial accounting or cost accounting course. So let's go ahead and look at those questions. The first question reads, um, what is the estimated total variable cost per unit? Once again, once you have a lot of data and a question, focus on the question first. So I'm looking for variable cost. Well, the estimated cost for coal using absorption for costing is to produce and sell it at a level of 12,000 unit per month. So basically, they're asking us for the total variable cost. So what's the variable cost? Well, let's look at, di at direct material. Is direct material variable cost? Sure it is. It's a variable cost. Direct labor, sure. Variable cost means we incur that cost as long as we are producing. Sure we do. Variable manufacturing. Well, it says variable, yes. Fixed manufacturing, no. Variable selling, it's variable, yes. Okay, fixed selling, no. So if we take 32 plus 20 plus 15, let me just fix this. 32 plus 20 plus 15 plus 3, that's 52, 62, 66. And that's going to be 70. 70. Therefore, my variable cost is $70. Okay, let's take a look at this question. Estimate the total cost that coal would incur during a month with a production level of 12,000 and a sales level of 8,000 unit. So it's basically the same data that we have. Uh, so basically, do we, so if we produce 12,000 unit, okay, do we incur $32? Sure we do. If we produce the 12,000 unit, do we include the direct labor? Of course we do. Do we incur the variable overhead? Sure. What about fixed manufacturing overhead? Yes. What about variable selling? Well, variable selling, yes, but remember, we are only selling 8,000 units, so I'm going to keep the $3 on the side here. And fixed selling, $4. Yes, sure, the fixed selling will be included here. So let's add up. So this is keep the variable selling separately, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment. So let's add this up. That's 52. That's 52, 62, 67, 73. So 77 dollars. So let's take 77 dollars, multiply it by 12. Take 77 dollars, multiply it by 12,000. That's 924,000. Then we have a variable selling price of three dollars. And remember, we only sold 8,000 units, so that's going to be an additional 24,000 dollar. We're going to add $24,000. That's going to be $948,000 as the total cost. So the trick here to be careful that we did not, we produced 8,000 units and all of those, so let me highlight the production cost for you. All of those were in the production cost except the variable selling. You have to multiply the variable selling by 8 because you only incurred $8.00. Uh, uh, you only sold 8,000 units, therefore the variable selling times three. What is the total variable cost at 100,000 copies? Uh, what are we given here? We are giving January and February data. So data from the duplicating department of a company for the last two months. So on January 100,000, February 150,000 copies, the total cost is 8,500 and 9,500. So now they want the variable cost. Well, you need to know the high-low method. What's the high-low method? If you have a bunch of data, you might have the whole 12 months. You select the highest and the lowest month. And here we are giving the highest and the lowest month because we're given only two months. So you take the difference in the dollar amount between the highest and the lowest. And here the difference is a, is a thousand. This is called the high-low method. Divide them by the activity, the difference in activity. The difference in activity is 50,000 unit. So 1,000 divided by 50,000 unit, I believe that's 1.2, 50,000 copies, that's 0 0.02, 0 0.02, that's your variable cost per unit times 110,000 copies, times 110,000 copies, and that's going to give you a variable cost of 2,000 200, which is 2,200. This is the high-low method. Once again, you select the highest and the lowest month, and you take the dollar amount, divide them by the by the difference in the uh, unit for those two months to find. So this is your variable cost per 
unit. And this is an estimated number. This is an, there you can use linear, um, you can estimate there are other factors, but this is using two points, two points to figure out your variable cost. In manufacturing its product for the month just ended, elk incurred normal spoilage of 10,000 and abnormal spoilage of 12. How much spoilage cost should elk charge as a period cost? Well, here, what they're asking you is, do you know the difference? How do we treat normal spoilage versus abnormal spoilage? Here we go. Normal spoilage is part of the product, part of product. So we assume we're gonna have some spoilage, which is we add to the product. Any Anything that's considered abnormal, abnormal means more than we expected, more than normal. What do we do with that? We expense it. Therefore, expense it means what? Expense it means it's a period cost. Expense mean period cost. Therefore, the 12,000 is considered a period cost because we will we would incur normal spoilage even under efficient operation. We, we account for that, but for abnormal, we don't. Dale Company uses a standard costing system in connection with manufacture of a one-size-fits-all article of clothing. Each unit of finished product contains two yards of direct material. However, a 20% direct material spoilage calculated on input quantities occur during the manufacturing process. Well, what does that mean? It means they use two yards, but they don't start with two yards. They start with more than two yards and 20% is lost during the process and we are left with two yards. Um, the cost of direct material per yard, so the cost per yard equal to three dollars that's the cost per yard so what's the standard direct material cost per unit well you might be saying well we're using two yards times three dollars that's equal to six but remember we are ending up using two yards okay each unit of finished product contain two yards of direct material but before we end up with that two yard we're using more so we don't know what we're starting with. We're starting with X and from X, whatever we are starting with, we are only keeping 80%, okay? And that's gonna, they're giving us two yards. So basically, how much are we starting with? That's X. Well, if we wanna find out X, X equal two divided by 0 0.8, two divided by 0 0.8. So we are starting with, we are starting with 2.5 yards. Okay, we are simply put, we're starting with 2.5 and we're keeping 80% of it. Let me simply put 2.5 times 0 0.8, we're, we're two, we, are, we are ending up with two yards, but we're really using 2.5. Therefore, we need 2.5 yards times $3, and I believe that's 750. Okay, and that's 750. Okay, um, worst case situation, if you get to this question, it cannot be a and you know you're using more than two, it cannot be B, so you're between C and D. If you have to guess, you're between C and D, but it's, you know, quick math, and you should be able to uh, to do so, okay? Basically, those are a series of questions. In the next session, I might look at the questions that deal with special order. If you have any questions, email me about these questions. If you're studying for your CPA or your CMA exam, make sure to study hard. It's worth